a lot of rappers still it seems like want to be Tupac. They want to have his popularity. They want people to love them like they everyone loves him. But why do you think no one's succeeding? <laughs> well, because I, this is what they fail to realize about Tupac. In order for them to be Tupac, they would have to die before they peaked. Like before they peaked, they would have to die. So if you don't like, you don't die. You, you can't do it. Bottom line, if you don't go die. You're not gonna be the next two five, cause it ain't gonna be the next two five. Straight up. I was out in California during that time, during the East Coast, West Coast shit. And but it felt like it was going on forever. Yeah, I'm it, sure it, it did. Man, that shit, man, that shit was Sheesh. that was something. Like, and especially a cat that wasn't from either one of those places, and you yeah. kinda in the middle box <laughs> right. go. Like, God damn, this shit is serious. You had to learn all that shit. <laughs> oh yeah, and I stayed out there. I didn't know that's what they meant. <laughs> no, nigga, I, real this is a true story. So we out, we out for the Soul Train Awards. I'm on Motown. Right. Um, this is when Andre Harrell was there. So he was putting forth like this whole new media blitz to kind of promote him coming over to Motown. So he had billboards and shit everywhere. Mm. And um, when the Soul Train Awards came to LA, he threw a big like Motown coming out party. Like, you know, this is, this is my thing. I'm taking over to him. Mm. And uh, I will never forget it. It was in Sunset Plaza, that little strip on Sunset Boulevard. And it was a, a restaurant there where he had this party and it was kind of like open. So we in there and mind you, I'm like 16 at the time. I shouldn't even been in that shit, but I was. Right. <laughs> and um, I'm in there dancing with this chick or whatever. And stepping. Stepping, doing my little thing. <laughs> I think I was moonwalking. I was still playing. You was in there, yeah. yeah. You was I was moving. still playing my Michael Jackson shit. You know what I'm saying? Like so um, <laughs> I'm, I'm dancing and shit. And all of a sudden it was just, just this huge commotion. You just saw people kind of like fleeing right. and going to all these different parts of the club. So I'm looking around, I'm like, and I just see like a red Bentley pull up and I think it was like a black Bentley and like Suge and Pac jumped out of separate Bentleys. Uh -huh. And they, I mean, they skirted past security and the whole nine. Security didn't even, they didn't even ask them what they were doing there searching or nothing. They breezed past security and they went around the party looking for like members of Bad Boy and like, and looking for Andre and shit like that because that was during that whole, that was at the beginning of the shit. In the club looking for they, And they left you in there. Man, my right handed guy. No, I saw this. I was in there oh, with okay. my cousin Kevin. Okay, my okay. cousin Kevin Harrell. <laughs> he was my guardian. He was traveling with me at the time. So we, we both in the spot hanging out and doing our thing because it was a festive, it was the Soul Train Award. Right. Yeah. What's going on? It's it supposed to be shit. fun. Man, yeah. them niggas came through there. Like, <laughs> it's supposed to be bro, fun, man. Yeah, it's supposed to be fun, but man, they they came through on, like they were pushing the line. What happened? Man. No. <laughs> I had seen, I had seen Andre, and Andre, I love you. God rest your soul, man. I saw Andre, because we were laughing about something maybe five minutes prior to that. Right. But man, when them niggas came through, I didn't see Andre after that. Took him back to New York. <laughs> and I was like, man, Dre, where'd you go? He was like, man, I ain't fucking afraid of him. He was like, man, I was out. But it was it was one of those situations where I saw all of that like up close and personal, like seeing Pac and Suge real aggressive out in the LA streets with all the death row, like all the Compton outside, mm -hmm. pushing the line. It was something to see. Yo, YouTube, what up? It's your homie Gab, I'm in the building. And this is Machiavelli Media. Jason Weaver. Jason Weaver was the shit. Was supposed to be a super duper star. Many people describe Jason Weaver when he first came out as the next Michael Jackson. That was a lot of pressure to put on one young man, absolutely. From the Lion King to the Jackson 5 television series, to Thea, to Smart Guy, to a solo recording career, you name it. Jason Weaver was in the mix. I'm talking about television, movies, all that. Music. The young man got a story to tell, absolutely. And one of the stories he told recently was with DC Young Fly, about being at an Andre Harrell party 
and having Tupac and Suge Knight party crash the motherfucker, looking for Bad Boy, probably Puffy and Biggie, and any of his associates. Crazy, crazy, crazy. What a time to be alive. The 90s, it was always on and popping. And anything pertaining to Tupac and Suge Knight, oh yeah, you was in for a real treat. Jason Weaver said he was at the party, just chilling out in LA, enjoying himself. Wasn't part of none of the politics, not a part of the bullshit, no East Coast, West Coast shit with him. Just chilling. He's an R&B artist. He's an actor. And more importantly at the time, he's a kid. Said he wasn't supposed to even be in there. What he said? He was 16 years old? After the BET Awards or post-BET Awards, Andre Harrell letting them know Uptown is in the building. And out of nowhere, two Bentleys pull up. A red one and a black one. Pac and Shug got Compton behind them. Yeah, they wanted all the smoke. <laughs> Jason Weaver say people parted that like the Red Sea. Andre Harrell was out. Leaving 16-year-old Jason Weaver to fend for himself. An incredible story. I'm sure he was confused. I'm sure a lot of things was going through his head. Probably was even scared. Because grown-ups was getting out the way. Getting low. So yeah, teenage Jason probably was like, yeah, I'm in some shit right now. Luckily for him and his story, nothing jumped off even though it could have went that way. It didn't. Andre dipped. I don't even know if Puffy and Biggie was even there. But once again, Sugar and Pac showed up looking for dudes. Looking for bad boy and any of their associates. Now, Andre Harrell, who ushered, or should I say, brought Puff Daddy to the game in the first place. Yeah, I know Suge wanted him. <laughs> he probably, he probably uh, blamed Andre for everything. Like, you invited this motherfucker into the industry. And this is the, uh, the wrath of that. And I know Pac. Pac wanted revenge for everything that happened in Quad Studio. Everything was coming to a head. And it probably would have went down right there on the spot. Well, anyway, tell me what you guys think about Jason Weaver's story. Don't forget to share and like this video. Give me a big thumbs up. Turn on the post notifications so you'll be the first ones to get it when I drop that shit. It's been a pleasure as always. I'm your homie Gab. I'm signing off. I'm about to hit y'all with the peace.